Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Copenhagen Dreaming. Uh, no, there isn't going to be an intro blurb today, and I'm going to start with a small disclaimer. Um, I've had an absolutely horrific day from hell plus five, which means that I'm not at 100% when we play this session. Um, might be something you can hear on my voice. It might not be, but I've had a really awful day. Um... So without getting into any kind of details about that, just be aware that it's probably going to be a slightly strange uh, episode. And on that note, we do need our usual recap. <laughs> yes, I have a kazoo. What was now. that? I have a kazoo now. <laughs> wow. Oh. Uh, yeah. Last time... You've been waiting a whole week to fire that off, haven't you? No, I only got this thing th uh, two days ago. But, uh, there you go. I'm just, I'm just happy to have a kazoo and show it off. Anyway, last time on Copenhagen Dreaming, um, basically, discussions were had regarding the information that, you know, Copenhagen and Denmark's uh, various fay under the summer winter courts are all screwed. Uh, and doomed in uh, in equal capacities by have I, by the shadow courts and by the um, the Swedish uh, Fey courts helping them. Uh, we discussed some tactics, we discussed some ideas, and eventually the Duchess uh, basically decided that it would be a good idea to send us to Dublin, to Ireland, because the Fey court in Dublin is essentially the high court of all the Fae everywhere and the RE uh, in charge there is nominally in charge of all the Fae everywhere so if we go to him, explain the situation and see if we can't either request aid from him or otherwise have him weigh in on a matter, a sort of a legal matter of having uh, Duke Hardenberg essentially um was it simply basically stripped of his title? Was the idea, or was that? I believe that was that was either one of those two things was the idea we'd go to, and that you know our motley, have being young and yet having achieved so much in so short a time, would be the perfect candidates to send as diplomats uh, on this journey. But yes, yeah, so all of the group had, bar well, those who didn't care to had to um, go back to their various parent units and come up with an excuse as to why they were, why they suddenly, out of nowhere, had to go to Dublin, uh, as in, you know, that very night, to, you know, various, in, leading to various dramas, but all, all in all, uh, parents were very accommodating and let everyone go. Uh... So yeah, we all we all um, and with some help from uh, from Xenia, who we are now quite good friends with, we made our way to Dublin and were picked up um, by another friendly werewolf and taken into her home in Dub in Dublin for a time. And then we met with a representative from the Irish Fay, um, Aura, who uh, <laughs> some people from the song at Tara Days might remember as the what is the beautiful long-haired sex god that um, is it uh, that Fenner ended up with in the end? So yeah, and the original plan had basically for the session for now was that we would prepare to uh, to go on to the um, the Fay Court at the Bleeding Horse in Dublin, but uh, in the interests of a somewhat more chill session today, I think we might try. Something a bit different. We might decide, you know, take in the sights or something similar. Well, uh, what we're going to do is um, you can still go to the bleeding horse, and I can definitely, uh, um, I I can definitely interact with you like that. That's that's not the problem. The point here is, you know, just as long as you guys are kind of you right. know, setting the pace, that's that's the main thing. Okay. But we shall do our we shall do our utmost. Meanwhile, I think um, Rasmus has had an attack of some kind of um, uh, spirit. Yes, anyway, it so... has curdled his milk. Yeah, that's just. 
Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... Do we, were we planning to go straight to the to the bleeding horse, or was there some, were we planning to spend the night first? I think we, because I think we had we we arrived quite late. We we're having dinner. Yeah, yeah there was it, the point was that you guys would be going to the bleeding horse the following evening. Oh, good. But then we do have some time to explore Dublin and take in some some yeah. of the people have the possibility to to take some pictures and stuff and yeah. make the parents believe that it was good enough. <laughs> And yeah. Whatever you said was actually true. Yes. So, yes. Building alibis. Yes. And also, Rasmus wanted to go see the park. I can't remember the name. St. Stephen's Green. Yeah. That one. Yeah. It's a very, very nice place. <laughs> Just have to be. We just have to be on our best behaviour. Even if, it, even, even during the day when it's a public place that everyone can go to, there will be, there will most likely be a couple of werewolves knocking around to keep an eye on everything. Most likely. Yeah. So, anyway, you guys can get some rest, and you know, there's a day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, imagine that. The sun actually rises. Mm -hmm. My goodness. In the world of darkness? Yeah, it's they... weird, isn't it? Hmm. It's 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 actually quite a misnomer. It should be the world of sun sunlight and pink butterflies. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's how I read it now. <laughs> and when it is changing the dreaming, and changing the dreaming is the nice world of darkness setting, I think not. <laughs> um meat hooks and seventy five meter long dragons. Yeah. In that case, not when you're playing with Joan. Yeah. We like Joan's world of darkness. Um, yeah, it's a world of darkness, not a world of rainbows and sunshine. Hmm. But, so we wake up, we're, we're staying with Francesca, yeah? Yes, you're staying with uh, with Francesca, or at least you have the option to, you know, if, if, if you'd rather go and find a hotel or something, then that's, that's ob obviously also an option. Hmm. Yeah, but just, she already uh, looked at for bedding and such, so that was quite yeah. rude. She did, uh, but again, it's, it, I'm sure she wouldn't feel she wouldn't be too put out if one of them just said thank you, but rather, but in Justin's case, she's happy to take it. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Hmm. Do we want to do we want to do any sort of role playing before we sleep or? No. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but talking when you are about to fall asleep during sleepovers is always the best. <laughs> I mean, you can't help it when you see it, just can you? Because you, it's just you know, chatting is just part of it. <sighs> okay, well. Uh... So, um, yeah, I think Jonas asks the room. How do we know we're doing the right thing here? Mm. We don't. I feel that's I feel that's a question that many people have asked many times over the last few however long years. Um, but a feeling? I mean we haven't been as corrupt as the Fernops yet. I think that's why they send us <laughs> Send us the so we're so young and impressionable. I mean, do yeah, but in a good way. Yes. Um, what a, what about what we're doing is concerning you, Jonah? It's definitely going to destabilize things. Talking to the Fae here, asking for help. No, depending on what we're asking them, I suppose. Well, then we need to decide what we are going to be asking them. Yeah, that's... Are we asking that's... for judgment or are we asking for help? I mean... Um... I don't know. Well... 
doesn't this doesn't that... feel like the kind of thing you can just make up as you go along. No. I'm also asking for help <laughs> and receiving it would be... I mean, it would help us more because it would somewhat help go towards making the Swedish court's presence less of a issue. If we have an ally in the Shadow Court have an ally, then it was, it's less one-sided, if you understand. But it's a much, much bigger thing to ask of uh, of a court, especially this one, especially considering that, you know, a couple of years ago they, they've suffered such terrible losses in their own fights. They may not be willing to they may not be willing to reach out and help and risk losing more people again like that. Yeah, and as far as we know, the court of Sweden is also officially recognized, so... They might... could just as well decide that Sweden is within their right to try and retake the lost territories. Maybe they will. But it's up to us to try and convince them otherwise and I think I think despite our concerns we we should we will be able to give it our all <laughs> no pressure <sighs> well doesn't doesn't it doesn't it doesn't feel that real does it considering how far we've we've come but isn't this just politics yeah but politics have an impact yeah, so? Well, I wouldn't want to turn out in the long run to have been on the wrong side of history. Well, as far as I know, it's the winners who decide which side is the right side of history. So, it doesn't really matter, as long as you win. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Um... I mean, I would say that considering... It depends how far into history you go. I mean, look at the um, look at the British Empire, for example. I mean, they they wrote the history. They conquered a quarter of the world, and they were seen as right by many. We can look at them now and say they they did some pretty terrible things, and they weren't actually in the in the right a lot of that time. Now, because we've had a hundred years to think on it. Yeah, but the British wasn't the only one writing their history. There's too many scholars and other sites around Europe who, who are writing things too. It's the same with um, it's the same with uh, America. Look at America during the Cold War. I mean, even as the Cold War was going on, you had three different views of it. You had those who thought that America was right in everything, and the um, the Russians were terrible. Then you had a sort of revisionist view of where people thought, no, the the Americans are doing absolutely terrible things. Russians are much better, but the Americans are terrible. And then you've got today, you've got a kind of post revisionist view where everyone's like, yeah, it's a bit complicated. So it, I would say that although history, yes, is written by the victor, it doesn't always stay fixed. It, the views change as much as history changes. Yeah, that's true. But, but nonetheless, as long as you get to be the one who's writing the history, no matter how it would be re revisited later. You are the one who's victorious and the one who dictates how the first terms of history is going to be. I suppose. It's worth to point out that the Duke and Ivar were also victorious. That's true, but they're still living, which means they're not history yet. Hmm. Hmm. But, uh, either way, even... I just don't think it's possible for us to be able to tell now whether or not we are on the right side of history, because it hasn't happened yet. And again, as, as, as was pointed out, this is politics. Nobody's completely clean. Nobody's completely good or bad. It's, we're never going to be able to say, all right, this is, this is the one good person above all else we should back this person because you know I don't think have, you, we have to we have to compromise i don't think you get to be a leader in, in society 
without having a lot of skeletons in the closet. Don't you get to be a leader in any society without having skeletons in the closet? No. Hey, sure. um... So actually, all we can do is oh, we pick the right side and then go with it. Yeah, I suppose that's true. If I might ask, what other side would you suggest picking? Well, there's the fanatic summer side. If you choose to go with the, the Duke and just fanatically believe that he's the right one to beat anything, and so on, you'll just deny whatever we figure out in all of this, and say he had his reasons, mm -hmm. and then fight to find some other way to deal with this. Yes. That's a good point, actually. My fear is that if we ask for the judgment of the Duke, that that will weaken Denmark's position to such a degree that Sweden will just roll over and uh, roll over us and overtake it all. Well, that doesn't mean we don't have a year to to fix these things. No. What about if? If we actually do neither of what you're talking about, we we don't really ask for help and we don't really ask for judgment or uh, ask for counsel. I mean, they have just been in a war. Mm, we can't just use counsel for anything. We no, need no. an actual, actual solution. I know, but I mean, instead of placing the whole future of Copenhagen and Denmark on a group of teenagers. I mean, we we weren't set, sent here to make a decision. We were sent here to see what was possible. Mm. I suppose a decision was already made when we were sent here by the Duchess, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, am I misunderstanding that she sent us here to ask for judgment for the two? Mm, that's what I believe too. I do believe that that the Duchess has a strong will, but that she's not stupid and expecting things where she doesn't know completely what she's got. So she might have a suspicion or some idea that it is, is possible to get judgment. But if she was completely sure, she would just have um, gone herself or sent an official saying, and somebody who actually knows how this, this works would say, I am in my right to ask for this. Now she's sending a group of teenagers that have never been here before, who are still quite new to all this politics part of, of the Bay community so she can actually, I don't know, cover her butt if anything should go unplanned. Yeah, I suppose there's always the... <sighs> we could always be involved in some scheme. I'm pretty sure we are involved in multiple. Yeah. The question is how, whether we want to try and discover what those are, or if we are, if we can find it in ourselves to come to terms with the fact that yes, people are going to use us, and we have to handle that as best we can. It would have been easier had we just been messengers and not, I don't know, what's the word, emissaries? Yes, emissaries or diplomats. But I suppose just handing a letter over would be a bit, I don't know, rude, inefficient. Yes, again, there is, there is protocol to observe. 
has to be, it has to be done properly and it has to be done dynamically i think is the word we have to you know, engage we have to be invested in what we do isn't it a little late wondering about all this now um, perhaps but it's the first time we've really had you know time to catch your breath mull things over well I'm just wondering why you're first wondering this now we all said yes to go here and ask the big king to see over our duke because our duchess can't bring him to court anywhere because she's <laughs> the same level as him yeah I'm just worried it'll, that it'll destabilize the mark well, it would be destabilizing even more if he dies in a year because she goes crazy, the big dragon lady, and we don't have a year to reorganize. Yes, but that, he does have a point. No, and if he stays, is, we'll also have a very angry dragon. My worry is that if the duke is is judged and has to, I don't know, abdicate, then I'm not sure the Shadow Court will will necessarily wait until we've got our shit sorted out. No, but the ruling could also be that in a year's time he will have to submit to the dragon, and but not until then. It could be that we request of the High Court that an official judgment to be rendered in such a way that in such a way that only select few people would know of it and would only come into effect in the future at a set date that no one else might know about that way it would occur and we would have time to prepare knowing that it, that what we've set in motion will come to pass exactly and of course awesome. We won't know any of that, because the second we start doing this, it will no longer be us, it will be the Duchess and the King talking, I'm pretty sure. How? Oh. If we set it up and he says yes to oversee something, then they'll need to work out the details. Oh, I thought you meant when we go to meet him. Mm. For a then... moment there, I thought you were going to project an image of the Duchess or something, and... Have them speak that. Like something out of Star Wars, you mean? A little hologram. Yeah. That could be, that could be that? fun. No. No. Damn. Help me, Ari Kenobi, you're my only of hope. Of course. <clears throat> Discussing that element of it, that, that is why we've suggested the second part of why we're here, the second request we might make for actual actual military aid. So you suggest we request both? There's no harm in asking. The worst they can do is say no. no that's actually not true when it comes to politics. Exactly. There can't be harm in asking. Again, it depends entirely on how the courts here see Sweden's claims over Denmark if we get the imp if we get the impression that they are sympathetic to Sweden then we shouldn't if we get the impression that they are not or even better that they may be sympathetic to us we should request it we have to read the intentions and the feelings however guarded they will go they are going to be of the people we are asking help from well think about it they want to ruin and kill and murder all she in all of Denmark. And the king here is quite possibly a she. I would, I would honestly be surprised yes. if he wasn't. Yes. They want to turn it into a troll baron. You already told that the king here is a she. Um, so. So he might not be too keen on the idea of she genocide. Probably not. Or another barony being made in the 
name of someone who wants to murder every she he sees. That will also mean every future she ever made in Denmark would probably be murdered on sight. That's true. I suppose that's a pretty strong point to bring up. Exactly. If you consider what loyalty would a troll barony, uh, a, a Swedish backed shadow court ruled Denmark to the Fae here and the, the power vacuum it would create? Well, an easy way to do it actually would be to make Denmark a kingdom. Under whose rule? Who do you uh, think? If the High King uh, tells, for instance, the Duke or the Duchess, uh, promotes them, so to speak, they both got the royalty in the blood, otherwise they wouldn't have become Duke or Duchess. So there must be somewhere down the line that something can be traced to them. <clears throat> But that's far in the future. We first have to get there. Yeah. yeah. That's still something to consider. Because it, it's a way to fix this sort of situation. Well, seeing they don't actually have a winter court and a summer court or a shadow court here, it's just one court under the king. He might be more happy if there were only one court in there. Yeah. But we still don't know before we met him. Yeah, yeah I'm probably too. being uh, a worry wart, but it just seems a bit much to place on our shoulders. Mm. It was a bit much to place Thomas's life on our shoulders in the first place. It was also a bit much asking us to go around seeing the entire past of this place and pick out dirt on area. So you're saying the Duchess has a tendency of asking us a bit much? No. I think she has a tendency to choose the people she sees fit for the thing. Nah. I mean, that's a nicer way of saying it. Mm. She is merciless, yes, but she's practical. She wouldn't send us if she didn't want this to happen. Mm. She seems so pissed at the Duke of all the things he's been hiding behind his back and pretending not being there. And I'm pretty sure she wants this to end before everything goes completely out of hand because she doesn't want to die either. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. And about doing the right or the wrong thing or being on the right or the wrong side, we can't tell, we just have to do what feels right. And to me, it feels right getting this set before the entire invasion happened. Yeah, you have pretty good uh, gut instinct, don't you, Sunny? This is probably the only thing I have. But it feels more right going with the Duchess, who doesn't seem as conceited or hiding everything behind a pleasant smile. As the Duke has been. I'm sure she's not perfect, even though she looks perfect. I'm sure there's things she's hiding, but I'm also sure she's trying to do the best she can for Denmark at the moment. Mm. And if I have to choose between a Duke that's going to get eaten by a dragon within the next year, or a Duchess who's trying to do the best for Denmark and isn't hiding behind something, I think I'm gonna go with her. That we know of. That we know of. But again, we can't tell the entire picture because we don't know the entire picture. We no, can just do what we think is right at the moment. As long as we do something. Exactly. Better do something than nothing at all and then just sit in a corner waiting for hell to break. Hmm. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm definitely not suggesting we do nothing. I'm just... Suggesting we take the time to think about the things we do before we do them. Of course. We have the time. Of course. But remember, Jonas, that it's important not to let too much worry or indecision about what the right course is stay our feet. I read something, I actually read something on the internet a, few, a little while ago that I think mm -hmm. 
fits this. It's a saying from this chap. So from this 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 man called um, William Blake. I shouldn't say chap. It's a very British thing to say. Out of character, to avoid Britishisms. This man, William Blake, he said, "Prudence is a rich, ugly old maid courted by incapacity." Basically, saying that prudence, caution, too much of it, just creates indecision and leads to nothing. So, caution is good, but it must be measured with action. Hmm. I agree. Yeah. And now, <coughs> I, and now I'm going to act by trying to get some sleep. Yeah. I'm probably not going to get much. Sleeping in a new place, I always sleep poorly. Hmm. No, it's strange. It's actually good here. I feel more... I feel a bit more at peace here than I have for a while. Hmm. Might be the seeing new things thing. Yes, probably. Also, might be the realisation of being physically away. You can't really do anything to change anything at all. So you can actually leave those things alone. Does that make sense? Yeah. Things you would normally worry about that you might have an impact on by being physically there. You can actually let go of. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it might just be me being excited about somewhere else, but I feel great even though this is a big task. Hmm. In any case, we should probably all get some sleep. Yeah. See you tomorrow, guys, then. Sleep tight. Sleep, sleep tight. tight. And, and lo and behold, you do, in fact, get some sleep. Mm. Even though nice. it might be more difficult for some to fall asleep than others, you know, eventually everybody does get some sleep. And you wake up the next morning to the smell of, uh, you know, toast and coffee and so on in, in the whole house. Irish breakfast. Actually, more Italian in this case. Okay. I mean, Italian-Irish is an interesting combination. But yes, Italian, Italian breakfast sounds quite nice as well. It, it involves large amounts of Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you say you, that's that's not a bad thing. N not at all. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> you know, strong coffee, toast, and Nutella. Mm-hmm. I don't see a problem with that. No. Nope. I don't really think anyone does. Mm-hmm. And, um... You, uh... You are all sleeping in, in the rather large uh, living room, you know, basically on... on uh, couches and, and mattresses pulled in so you get some place to sleep and so on and so forth. Um, the kitchen is uh, uh, is in another room. It's it's not a kitchen slash living room. It's the, the kitchen is in another room. Okay. So it's an older apartment. Yes. Just a bigger one. Most modern, at least in Denmark, have the kitchen and living room in one. Yeah, it's not as normal in, in Ireland. They still have a lot of, of places with the build where they are separate. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, mm. okay. So, what's the weather like outside? It's pretty good. It's, it's uh, you know, a little cloudy, but but no rain. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not afflicted by Irish summertime. No. Yes, we have been. Last time we went out, it yes. was good, and then oh, a bit of a little cloud, and then whoosh. exactly. But but uh, no, today it's it's uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice day. Yay! For you now, start, you can go. Start, will, will you stop being so goddamn pessimistic? I'm not. I'm just remembering yesterday. The weather was beautiful, and then suddenly heavy rain. Mm hmm. Okay. 
So let's see. Uh, hmm. That's a good point. So while we're having breakfast, um, shall I spend more? Is, is Francesca there? Oh, so you head into the kitchen then? Okay. Uh, well, Francesca's there. Her husband isn't. Um, mm-hmm. uh, he has apparently gone off to work. Uh, Francesca's sitting there with the uh, with the baby, um, having apparently just finished feeding said baby. Um, mm-hmm. And across the uh, the table from from her is sitting another woman. Another woman. Oh. Okay. Oh. Morning. Oh, hello. That woman. Uh, of all... Of all... The werewolves. I think Chris has a little happy flip in the background. Oh, I always do when it comes to this thing, but... Okay. She, yeah. So, she, uh... Oh, Francesca oh, looks hello. up and says, Oh, good morning. Have you slept well? Uh, yeah, I, thank I, you. I, Yes, thank yes. That is good. Mm-hmm. That is good. Um, I took the liberty of making some breakfast. It smells awesome. Well, I think, according to my husband, you could float a horseshoe in my coffee. Float a what? You could float <laughs> a horseshoe in my in my coffee. It's that strong. Mm. Oh, like that. That sounds good. I don't suppose you have any tea. Oh yes, yes, of course I do. Don't worry. Uh, she gets up and gets some some uh, some tea. It's tea bags, but you know, yeah, still tea. It's still tea. So, uh, so hold on, we, okay, we can see um, we can see this other woman. Yeah, well, Winda but... sitting across from her, just looking, you know, mildly interested at the lot of you. Um, she she, who? she looks at Francesca and then she looks at you just as you are about to speak up, and she looks like she's about yeah. to say something too, but she waits until you're done. I'm sorry, you have you have a certain disadvantage, uh, Miss. Um, my name is Winda. Uh, she says and extends a hand. Okay. Um... She's she's wearing a a top that clearly shows off the tattoo around her neck. Jasmine will shake her hand and think. Some very impressive tattoos. Thank you. They were extensive to get made, obviously. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure you have us as or you you were at such a disadvantage. I don't know uh, anything about I, any of you either, except that Francesca, you uh, did you say that Xenia had called you about them? And Francesca just nods from the uh, from over by the the kitchen table where she's boiling up some water for tea. And she brings that back over and sits down and, and says, uh, "Yes, she she called rather abruptly last last afternoon, yesterday afternoon, and said that she had a whole lot of friends who needed a place to stay, a whole lot of friends who need to go to the bleeding horse." And Winda just like, "Oh." Oh, I see. Um, well, welcome in that case. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I I suppose it's only fair in that case to explain that I'm I am like uh, both Senya and and Francesca here. I'm Guru. Huh. So, in the interest of continued good relations and so on, I thought you'd better know that. That's a I... guru. That, that's their word for werewolves. Oh. <clears throat> Never heard it before. Sorry. <laughs> I suppose you then realize what we are going to the bleeding hall. Well, you're presumably going to see Rory. Uh, she just looks to Francesca to see if that's correct. She nods. Maybe. She nods. Oh yes, yes. As in, uh, yes. As in His Majesty the RE. Yeah, Rory. To me. You, you <laughs> are on a first name basis with the High King of all the Fae. 
Well, most of the time anyway. In front of his entire court, I'll call him His Majesty. And forgive my impertinence for asking, but who are you to him in all this? Probably his strongest ally in all of Dublin. Oh, so you're in charge of the... Yes. Oh, good grief. That's, uh... That's, that's quite impressive, actually. I have I've... been, as you say, in charge of the werewolves in Dublin since the battles a couple of year ago, the years ago that I'm sure you must have heard some of by now. A bit. Our leader, as well as that of the of of your kind, were killed during that unfortunate series of events. <laughs> and uh, in the aftermath, it was decided that I should I should take over. So you have some sort of. Uh, democracy? You could say that. We we tend to... Can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. You could say that. We do, uh, we do in fact, elect our, our leaders. Uh, and then again, not really. Um, we elect our leaders based on who is the strongest. Um, yeah, Sonia said something. Uh, except in my case, they decided that I was the strongest rather than me having to prove it. Um, I wasn't actually aware that I was a, a candidate for leadership until I was made the leader, let's put it that way. No, oh, well, that's certainly an honor then. Very much so, and, and I take my responsibilities quite seriously, obviously. There are quite a number of of Guru here in, in Dublin, so I have to be a pretty good leader to all of them. Yeah, if, uh, if only the situation was the same in Denmark. Oh? Is it anything I'm allowed to ask about, or is this something that I should probably not get myself involved in? Uh, well, actually, I think... Uh... I think Francesca was going to bring it up eventually anyways. So, so, but it's one of those things you're allowed to ask, but you really don't want to be involved in it? I'll, I'll take my chances. So what's going on with why you're here? Oh, that's... Oh, that's, oh, oh I was talking about the werewolves and then mine. Oh, right. No, uh, oh, geez, yes, I'm aware of that. Ugh. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you don't want to be well, I'm I am already involved in it. That's why Xenia is in Denmark. Oh. oh, thank you for that, then. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, she's one of my best, so I decided, seeing as she's Danish herself, she had something to, she had good reason to get herself involved back there. And besides, I have every confidence that she can kick the ass of any idiot who gets in her way. I'm happy you sent her. Well, her and, and her, we were... her and Nadia, in fairness. Yeah, and um, was it sure shot? Yes. She is a sure shot. Gotta she, say. she is a good shot, definitely, yes. There was one situation here in Dublin where she killed one of our enemies at a mile's distance and blew him in two with that sh with that cannon of hers. Wow. Wow. Yeah, she's uh, she's she's quite lethal. Um, thing is about um, no about why you are here though, because obviously that's the more pressing matter. Um, what is what is it all exactly? What is going on? If I'm allowed to ask, I think so. Um, Jonas looks to the others. <laughs> Sunny shrugs. And I hesitate to say this because I just asked a question, but I'm going to have to pop AFK for just two minutes. Oh. If you got a leak, you got a leak. Yep. yep. Uh, just to stay in character. Um, well, I don't think that all this is going to stay a complete secret. 
So might as well be, you know. Well, if this one is, <laughs> if this one is the perfect ally to the king, then she's also the perfect ally for us. Yeah. Obviously, and if they are really good allies, there is no reason the king here wouldn't tell them. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that makes you sense. You might probably hear it anyway. So, yeah, and actually, you might be able to give us some advice of, on how to approach the king. I mean, since you're on first name basis. That's a good idea. And obviously, I'm speaking to Joan, who's not here right now. Oopsie. <laughs> We're just discussing among ourselves. Oh, yeah. If so we just we all put our heads three. together. Yeah. We are making a team. We, we have a team huddle in the kitchen. And the point, and then in the middle of it, in the middle of it, you just have um, when they're going, you know, I can still hear you, right? <laughs> 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 that could be funny. But yeah, just as as August said, she is an ally to the king, so if mm. we can sway her, she can sway the king, and she will know of it anyway. So might might as well take that to our advantage. And she seems really open. And I'm back. <laughs> Maybe, maybe Welcome we, back. Welcome, I guess. Maybe we see if we can offer something to her in exchange as well, you know, a favor. favor. Um, yeah, but just let's make sure that we actually have the terms of the favor so we don't make a duke. Yeah, we don't want to make a duke. Also, uh, maybe she just has a good idea on how to approach the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jonas turns back to where to Winda. Uh, sorry, I just had to make sure we uh, uh we're on our. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so everything's a bit shit in Denmark. Right. Uh, Not just for the werewolves, but for you as well. Yeah. Something's rotten yeah. in the state they're off then. Mm. Yeah. We have oh, where to begin. Um, so you know how. The Fae here have one chord. Yes. We have a summer chord and a winter chord. Okay. Yeah. That sounds complicated already. Yeah. And oh, and the third one. Okay, things just got really messy. Yeah, the third one is the shadow chord or the nightmares, or you can guess from the name how nice they are. Um, they sound like delightful people. Exactly. No, they are, they are allied... if you're a mess, my <laughs> Yeah. They have allied with a 75-foot-long um, dragon. Uh, 75 meters, actually, but yes. Yeah. Meters, sorry. Okay, uh, that's a problem right that there. Is recorded. That is recorded for the whole world to hear that you screwed up and used Imperial, Rasmus. I'm just pointing that out right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Metric is better. We were using... I just assumed we were using the stupid system because this is in English. Who's making raspberries? I am. I'm reveling in the moment. Oh. Okay. Proceed. <laughs> um, and they have... Um... So we have uh, a Duke of the Summer Court and a Duchess of the Winter. Okay. And so, something to... tells me from the names that they don't get along. They don't. They don't. Um. Oh, where to? Due to crime, war crimes committed during the Resurgence War. Right. I'm. Uh, I'm vaguely this... familiar with that. The Shadow Court is is there mainly because of that, I think. And they have allied with this dragon, who also hates the Duke. Wow. And I thought uh, our politics got messy. <laughs> and the worst uh, part, there's a reason. I mean, even we can see a good reason for them to be angry. As I said, war crimes. They were not committed necessarily only by the Shadow Corn. In fact, 
from what we've seen, the worst of it was committed by the she. Ugh. Okay, and you're gonna talk to the RE about that? Well, um, due to a lot of things, we are standing, um, in front of a possible war with Sweden. Oh, ew. Yes. And because, yeah, you go, Jess. Between the Shadow Court have been scheming with this dragon and with the Swedish um, non-she courts, as they all are, to um, to try and basically put uh, Denmark back under partial Swedish control under a kind of troll barony. You know, trolls as they have their own yeah a, a, common, a commoner's court rather than a noble court. Um, the dragon has given an ultimatum that asks Duke. Uh, needs to fight her alone and die by her hand or she'll come after the rest of us and that even when she does this that will be a signal for the Shadow Court and the Swedish Courts to go to war with us we are here first and foremost because the Duchess wants someone to judge the Duke for what he has done and she hasn't got the authority to do so, she is equal to him but the Ari here is the highest authority and he would be able to render judgment on the Duke's actions and, if necessary, strip him of his title and position. Or make his daughter the new Duchess. Or and make his and... Right, right. Here's the 64,000 euro question in that case. She says, do we actually have the Duke with you here in in Dublin, because if he's going on trial, you'd expect that he would be there to answer for his crimes. Or alleged yeah. crimes, should I say. Yeah, but right now we just need to figure out what possibilities we have. Oh, okay, um, okay, I get you. So, but, so we don't bring the Duke here, because if the answer is no, we will not help you, then that would be foolish. Hmm. Also, I'm pretty sure we have a duchess who are about to rip his ears off. In the case she of the she, a... that sounds really painful. Yeah. It's not as painful as what you threatened to do to him when we told her about all this. Mm-hmm. The, the really shit thing is that Baron Steele, the one who is the boss of the whole Shadow Court, does not like she and kill every she on site. Every she. He doesn't care if they've done anything. He doesn't care if they've anything to do with the resurgence war. If they're she, they're dead. So if they win, that's probably foolish. what's going to happen in Denmark. Yeah, that would be a problem. And also, that is absurdly foolish. I mean, I don't care He's what is... He's lost in hatred. Uh, okay. He's turned into an ogre so much he hates she at the moment. Ew. Yeah, I've I've met one of them. They're not particularly pleasant people. Alright, All right. well, I guess that you have a lot of work to do tonight at the at the Bleeding Horse. What do you have of plans until then? If I may ask. Well, officially to the mundane part of our lives, aka our parents, um, some of us are actually on an art camp, so... Alright! Anything heating up, we actually need to get I don't know, an alibi. Right, so art museums and the likes. Yeah. Which is, we were also thinking uh, of visiting uh, St. Stephen's Green in daytime in public, obviously not. Yeah, sure, go ahead. It's a, it's a very nice place to visit, and it'd be good to get some sketches and things a bit, if nothing else. Absolutely. We kind of like it there, my kind. Um, <laughs> so feel free. <laughs> um, other than that, let me see... Uh... Oh right! If you really want to, um, you know, to prove that you've been to to, to Dublin, 
you need to go to the the uh, there's a tourist um, uh, information uh, place roughly in the middle of, of downtown Dublin. Uh, it's not that far from here, actually. Where outside is, uh, they've they've placed the statue of Molly Malone outside, and according to to the locals here, <clears throat> she says, "Well, when you look at her, it's a bronze statue. Take note that she's, you know, she's got the coloration of bronze that has been standing outside. It's it's weathered, basically." Except for her bosom, which is very, very shiny, because they're known as the most fondled titties in Dublin. Do make sure you get a photo. Seriously? Seriously. Uh, but it's a statue. It's a statue it's of nice. the tart with the cart, and the whore with more, and whatever you want to call her. Why would anyone fondle bronze titties? Well, wait until you see them. They better be freaking good then. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> Let it not be said that the Irish are not upfront with their passions. Anyway, you you hmm. said something in the background, uh, Astrid. I didn't hear it. I think it was just laughing. Oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> hmm. But yeah. Sure. I, I'm, I'm not really sure that's going to get get the best impression coming home. Show well, it might home. be with your classmates, if nothing else. She says and grins. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. It it might be something that somebody would say. You need to do this. I thought it was just a song. You're telling me she was an actual person. Oh, she was an actual <clears throat> an actual person. Oh dear. Cool. Not real. That's yeah, well, in a way, she turned into a vampire eventually. We had to fight her. Yeah. Did you? Did you get her? No, she ran off. Oh. Darn it. Okay. We got all her mates though. Hmm. That's something. Oh yeah, I heard you chased out all the vampires. Yeah, chased them out or killed them. Nice work. We like to think so. Anyway, I shan't be keeping you. If you guys want to see some of Dublin, then by all means, do enjoy yourself. It's a beautiful city. Woohoo! Art! Come on, Agnes. We need to build your alibi. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Yes. Absolutely. Um. See you around. Since they're going to some kind of museum for things, and you're such a big bad werewolf, do you mind if we took the afternoon and sparred a little bit? I could use more some other training. <laughs> Yet, if you want, that's just, uh, don't, just don't rip me to pieces. No, please. no, I don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> stay non-furry. <laughs> I was you. about to say, and we'd come back to August. You know, being in a and everything else because he sparred with a werewolf. <laughs> mm hmm Well, always time to learn some new tricks. Just just don't deliver me to my friends in a bucket. Don't worry. It'll be two buckets. <laughs> Make it one and a half. We also have to take him back to Denmark. All right. <laughs> she grins. Anyway, she's uh, she's perfectly willing to train with with August. Um, uh, it should be uh, it should be said because we can we can handle that pretty quickly. She is a, f a fourth rank. Get a Fenris a rune. That says nothing to August. Uh, no, no, no. But it says it's it, it probably tells you that August is going to get his ass handed to him in sixty new ways that he had never heard of before. That's actually what I figured. <laughs> even if it was just rank one. Yeah, so she's that, a, she's she is a formidable warrior, but but uh, but she she's kind enough to actually you know. You know, she she tries to explain to him what it is that 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 she's doing. You yeah. know, so he can maybe get a few hints here and there. And that's what I was hoping for. Yep. <clears throat> so, 
So I think we are going to take our first break there because we've been going at it for an hour and then we will be right back with more uh, Copenhagen Dreaming in just a few moments. Sure. 